So we've got a couple of minutes left. What are you going to do? For Stonehurst us? Asylum. <laughs> Fun for all the family. No scenery left knowingly unchewed. unchewed. Um, so it's a Brad Anderson film, and uh, uh, at the beginning of it, Jim Sturgis is this uh, uh, this naive guy who turns up uh, at a uh, at an at the eponymous asylum. It's all Poe and everything. So he goes to the eponymous asylum, and he's met at the door by uh, by David Thewlis chewing the, the scenery as 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 a character called Mickey Finn. And you're going to guess which accent he's doing. Maybe he is Mickey Finn, maybe he isn't Mickey Finn. Anyway, when he arrives there, he finds Kate Beckinsale and her glamorous ear biter, Eliza. She's Lady Eliza, and she's, but, she, but she says to him, no, you mustn't say, don't take my word for it. Here's a clip. Interesting case, this one. Signor Balzani was thrown from his horse during a polo match in Milan and ever since has believed himself to be an Arabian <laughs> stallion. He gets a tad agitated at feeding times. Please go ahead. You'll find most of our patients are here because they are embarrassments to their families, outcasts. Senor, give the gentleman his arm back or I shall be forced to withhold grooming for a week. But you, you, you groom him? Small price to pay to keep him contented. Isn't that reinforcing his delusion? Yes. Unless you don't attempt to cure your patients. Cure them? To what purpose? Well, to bring them back to their senses, of course. And make a miserable man out of a perfectly happy horse. That kind of gives you a sense of where you are now. And in fact, when you hear that clip, you think, oh, actually, this is it's kind of witty and it's smart and funny and it understands. And it has the most star-studded cast. So we have Kate Beckinsale, we have Jim Sturgis, obviously. We have Sir Ben Kingsley. We have uh, Michael Caine. We have, I mean, it's, it is a real gallery of stars. And what you wonder is why exactly they've signed up for this incredibly ripe, uh, oh. hammy, hammery... Lusty, then. Lust, well, no, not lusty. Ripe, overripe, um, you know, scenery-chewing, bug-house chiller. If, you remember what Shutter Island was like? Yes, I, okay. I actually do. Fine. Re imagine Shutter Island turn up to 11 stupid. Well, but it was kind of... It was kind yeah. of turned up to 11 stupid even before we turned it up to 11 stupid. So, there, it, at its very best, it's kind of, you know, overcooked... Uh, overripe, overplayed, overcranked, only just sub Rocky Horror, hammy nonsense. That's at its best. At its worst, it's you wonder why it is that in a world in which you have films like you know Shock Treatment and uh, and Shock Corridor and uh, Shutter Island and of course most specifically the Ninth Configuration, which is the very best of all the you know lunatics have taken over the Asylum movies. If you want to see what a really good, funny, witty, intelligent, metaphysical movie which uses that very very well worn movie trope of the lunatics have taken over the Asylum. Watch the ninth configuration. As far as this is concerned, it is headed very swiftly, I think, to a to a DVD shelf. That's not to say that it's not without some pleasures. Partly just because you think, what was Michael Caine thinking at the point that he signed up for that role? It is. Uh, Does he play Michael Caine? Of course, he plays Michael Caine. But he plays he plays Michael Caine in a cage. He's in a cage, and so he does a lot of spitty. He does a lot of spittle flecked vowels in that very Michael Caney way. If you if if you'd come home late of a night, and it was you had a you know, and it was eleven o'clock, and you'd turned on channel five, yes. and this was on, you'd go, oh right, fine. <laughs>